So many Spider-Man comic books just spiked this past week. You probably have some in your back issue bin. I do. I've got one. Let's get into it. Another week, another list, another trailer across the Spider-Verse dropped a trailer this past week. It spiked a bunch of comics. Let's chat about them, but hit the like, slap the subscribe button. We're here every seven days for the comic fam, and our Overstreet Price Guide advisor will introduce you to number 10 on the list. Number 10 on the list, Amazing Spider-Man number 258. This is the first appearance of the bombastic Bagman. $35 average sales, and we are seeing CGC 9.8, a recent sale of $379. So this trailer, there were a bunch of shots featuring a bunch of different spider characters. And spider I'm sure, totems. I'm sure all kinds of people had fun pausing and freeze-framing and de deciphering who's who, but we got Bagman, bombastic Bagman, this first entry on the list, seeing a 350% increase in copies sold this week compared to last week. Peter Parker is rocking that black suit in 1984 that he got from Secret Wars, and he takes Reed Richards up on the offer that happened while they were on Battle World, suggesting that they should look into this costume, study it. And during this issue, ASM 258, we find out that this is not a standard suit, that it's an alien costume. Peter has to get rid of it, and to conceal his identity, he has bestowed one of the original Fantastic Four Jack Kirby design costumes, courtesy of Johnny Storm. And because he has this like teasing kind of childhood bullying boyish type of razzing relationship with this member of the FF, well, Johnny gives him a bag to wear over his head instead of a damn mask. Could have at least given him one of the Thing helmets. This is a very popular book and has been for quite some time. It's always considered a double key because you have the finding out black suit as a symbiote and you have the bombastic bagman. That's the reason why we see so many of these on the census. There are 310 copies at a CGC 9.8, but my favorite is that there is one solo 9.9 .9 and it is autographed by Stan Lee. How does that happen? The only 9.9 on the census happens to be autographed. Still a fantastically great book and people love this one. My first exposure to this character was in the Spider-Man video game in like the year 2000. It was like an alternative costume and this outfit has appeared in practically every single Spider-Man video game throughout the years. Mm -hmm. It's like a really popular, weird, obscure, alternate Spider-Man costume that is a uh, it kind of makes perfect sense that it'll be in this movie. I'm just bummed out that the shot we have of the bombastic Bagman outfit from the trailer he's just wearing the regular Spider-Man suit with the bag over his head. There's no Fantastic Four uniform anywhere. It kind of kills it for me. For the few times that Peter even dons this outfit between the Funko Pops and the toys, clearly the community and the fan base adores this strange costume. It's hit $700 heights as of 2021. If you enjoy our show, you want to support it, but better your comic book hunt, your collecting, utilize code TOM101 on the best comic app in existence. I use it every single day. It's called Key Collector Comics. You support what we do, but you get access to a free two-week subscription of the app in its entirety. I own a comic shop. I use it every single day. I recommend it to every single one of my customers. It is a must-use tool. We're going to move on now to number nine on the list. This is a repeat from last week. We've got Joker, the man who stopped laughing, number three. The B cover, the Christmas variant by Lee Bermejo. Matthew Rosenberg, you're writing a damn good Joker book. Every time I read a Joker book, I'm waiting for, you know, the same type of story. And then, boom, you get hit with something like this that I want to talk about so much on the mic. But I know if we even get into it a little bit, I will be spoiling it. You got to read this comic book. And also, Lee Bermejo, yo. Hot damn. We've also got to look at the variant covers. He's done all the B covers for all of these issues so far. The first issue, the second issue, we've seen the third one, and uh, there's even preview images of the covers for the upcoming issues in January and February up through issue five. So this is the second week on the list because it has doubled in price. We are seeing an $18 average sale and a confirmed high sale of $40. If you want a copy of this book, two things, be patient. You could probably pick it up for a little bit less after the first of the year, or don't just do a buy it now for 25 to $40. You can get these on auction in the 15 to $20 range if you can wait. Pick up your Joker. There's a really fun backup story that's in each of these that are kind of set in like an OG time period. It's well worth it. And Ryan, I know you always get B covers. Did you just like get all of these issues? Of course. I'm subscribed to this whole run for B covers. Well done. Well I'm, done. Well I'm done. kind of a Lee Bermejo fanboy, apparently. Speaking of which, check out A Vicious Circle. That's his new like magazine Brand oversized new. book. Just dropped this week. We got some preview pages we're going to show you here. 
just based on the art alone, I'm very, very excited. I have a good feeling about this book. And over here on the list at number eight, we have the number one most wanted modern comic key. We have Ultimate Fallout number four, the first appearance of Miles Morales, seeing $580 average sales. 9.8's hitting 2000 Is that right? $106? That's as of the fifth of this month. And in November, I saw a low of the entire year hit $1,466. The heights this book has reached in April of this year was $4,499, hot damn. This is one of those books that is now perpetually relevant. Everyone knows Miles Morales, everyone loves Miles Morales, and every time there's a new trailer, we see a bump in this book. But as you can also look, the prices are an absolute roller coaster. From $4,000 to $1,400 in a matter of like six months, that's a lot. There are tons of these graded. Currently, 3,669 of them at a 9.8 on the CGC scale, and there's probably gonna be even more, because every time they release a new trailer, you know someone finds a box of them and sends them in to get them graded. That's the part I found most interesting about this. Tom and Jem talked about this book like just over a week ago on the runners up, I believe it was. And since then, there have been 77 new Ultimate Fallout 4s added to the CGC census, a lot of them in high grade. That's like an average of six to seven being graded every single day. These prices, even though they're low, I'm starting to get FOMO here when Miles inevitably gets hinted or makes an appearance on the live action screen. I still think it's game over. I got to know what the community thinks and we have to move on to the next one on the list because we have more spider totems to talk about. We have Spider Geddon issue number zero from 2018. This is the first appearance of Spidey from like the PlayStation games. Yeah, this is the book I have. I've got multiple copies of this book, actually. spider Get in number zero. This is the first appearance of the video game Spider-Man from 2018's uh, Spider-Man on the PS4. With the white, the white spider symbol on his chest. A very affordable book. $8 average sales. $82 for a CGC 9.8. This is definitely one of those that you're going to be able to find in your back issue bins, but it has a 400% increase in copies sold this week. Again, because of the trailer. This book doesn't sell very often because there's not very many on the census at all. I mean, there's 55 graded copies and we have 41 of them graded at a 9.8. Both 9.8 sales have been at the $60 range prior to the one that Russ just reported on. This book is dope, but what's even better is the one in 25 variant, John Tyler Christopher, negative space. I like legit forget that the cover A even exists. When I think of the first appearance of this character in comics, I think of that blue. I think of that $150 book at a 9.8. That's what it just sold for. What do you think, guys? Like, we see a lot of characters in this trailer, but they can't all have that much screen time. I was shocked with the last movie that they actually worked Spider-Man Noir and Peter Porker Spectacular Spider-Ham into the plot. But yes, with this many ancillary characters, I don't think we're gonna get screen time from a lot of these little tiny characters. Play the video game though, if you haven't. It's my pick for like best superhero game of all time. The Miles Morales game is impeccable. It's short, but there is so much open world to enjoy swinging around those buildings and sticking to those walls at the list at number six the dark tower the gunslinger born number one when we were scripting this show the first suggestion was can we just have comic pops make the trip from montana he's on like a holiday trip right now to just cover this number and i think he would too he loves this book that much he would probably have cut his vacation short and come home to do this but no we got to talk about it without him i guess five dollar average sales 86 dollars for a cgc 9.8 there are multiple dark tower series and all of them are very faithful adaptations of an incredibly long story this is stephen king's magnum opus seven Seven and a half novels. It's one of those things that you will get lost in the world. I personally loved the movie, but this is great to see a book like this on the list. Intrepid Pictures has picked this up. This is Mike Flanagan. This is very good news. This is the gentleman who brought Dr. Sleep to the screen, which is the Shining sequel, which I've seen twice this year alone. So yeah, Mike Flanagan's basically like the Stephen King guy. He not only made the sequel to uh, The Shining, Dr. Sleep, but he also adapted Stephen King's book, Gerald's Game, for Netflix. And uh, he also made that show Midnight Mass for Netflix too, which is basically Salem's Lot. Stephen King novels are notoriously difficult to adapt. So the fact that we've got someone who knows what he's doing and is now signed on for apparently five seasons at Amazon and a two movie deal, this should be exciting for all Stephen King fans. $86, 9.8 is a fantastic deal when you consider the 2016 heights that were reached, $150 around the time the first crack of the movie dropped. This is a difficult book in high grade 
Wade. We have J. Lee Art on the interior. We also have Omnis that are really tough to find, scarce. It's your boy, Jim Mint. And updates on something that's killing the children. Yeah, Mike Flanagan, we haven't talked about him since he was attached to do something that's killing the children for Netflix, but he is super busy right now. He's got a lot going on. He's also working on a uh, Edgar Allan Poe adaptation for Netflix. And I guess he wasn't a fan of the way Netflix wanted to go with the story for something that's killing the children. So he has left that. That show is still happening. It just won't be without Mike Flanagan. Comic fam, if you want to support what we do, you need to sign up right now for the January Mystery Mail Call. Give us an excuse to send you hot books. I teamed up with Davis Ryder on his first Marvel exclusive and CBSI's own Mellow Fellow to be able to put a trade dress version of their exclusive one per box on Thanos Death Notes issue number one. We have a Ken Lashley cover going out to every single member, and that's not all. I teamed up with God of War art director Raf Grissetti to create a berserker number one. We have trade dress and virgins going out one per box at random. Join the community, comictown101.com, to get comics from us. And Russ, hit him with number five. Number five on the list, Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows number one. Now, this is the one from 2015. $8 average sales. We have a confirmed high sale of $43 for CGC 9.8 back in September. There is a more recent high sale, but we're really doubting its legitimacy. So this issue has the first appearance of Annie Parker. Anna May Parker is her full name. It's the daughter of uh, Peter and Mary Jane. It takes place in a Secret Wars kind of fake pocket universe. It's one of many, 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 many tie-ins to the 2015 Jonathan Hickman Secret Wars event. Uh, very cool read. Obviously, Secret Wars is a lot of fun. Maybe even ties into what they're doing in the MCU in the future. They redid this title the very next year, so make sure you're dealing with the right key book if you're on the hunt. It has the Secret Wars tie-in stamp on the cover. There's 124 copies graded at a 9.8, and in the Across the Spider-Verse trailer, we don't just see Annie. No, we see Mary Jane from this universe, who are both superheroes with superpowers in this pocket universe. Number four on the list, we have the Destroyer number one from 1991. That's hitting $5 averages. The high CGC 9.8 sale was $69 back in March of this year. There are over 150 novels that feature Remo Williams, the cult classic 1985 movie, essentially America's James Bond, if you would, that never got a sequel. But this is the first like series at Marvel, solo series, if you would, featuring the character that... Caused an uptick of a thousand percent in copies sold because people weren't speculating on this comic book when the TV announcement happened this past week. There is only one copy graded at a CGC 9.8 on the census, and it is sold twice in the last two years. Definitely not a book that is changing a lot of hands. People also need to be looking out for the one shot that happened in March of 1991. And keep in mind that his first appearance was in a magazine size comic book. Yeah, that magazine first issue came out November 1989. It just reprinted some of the stories from the novels. It just adapted novel old stories from the novels, but it did predate the comic book, and it is also on the wider uh, Key Collector Trending 20 list that we source these 10 books from. And what's this on the list? Oscar Isaac at number three, and it's not even Moon Knight. We don't even have a Bill S. cover. We have Spider-Man 2099. Issue number one, debuting in 1992, foil 90s goodness. Long gone are the days that this was a dollar bin book. This is a massively high print book from 1992, but it is condition sensitive because it is a foil cover. $20 average sales and a high 9.8 went for $180 on December 8th of this year. We also saw a new stand go for $500 on the 13th of December. We have a 200% increase in copies sold compared to this book selling last week, and there are 7,001 copies graded on the CGC census. We also had Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099. He appeared in the uh, in the post credit scene in the original Into the Spider-Verse from 2018, so it's cool to see him coming back I get the feeling that this spider character is actually going to be a character in the movie more so than some of these other people we've been talking about on this list. This was one of the stronger books to spike post the first animation movie because of that post credit scene, as well as ASM 365, which is the preview of this book on the list, making it one of the key books to own. More individuals are after that preview appearance than the first full appearance, especially considering that it comes from the ASM run. Amazing Spider-Man, that as a variable 
changes the collectible landscape as it pertains to key comic books. Number two on the list, more Spider-Man goodness. And this is one we've been talking about for a very long time. Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man number 98. This is the first appearance of Spot, a villain who's been rumored to be in the new movie for many, many years. $30 average sales and $510 for a CGC 9.8. So yeah, there were uh, rumors leading up to this movie, but now that we've gotten some trailers, we, we know for sure Spot is the, the main villain in this movie, and he's got his weird teleportation powers through these holes he can make in, in the wall. And he's a weird guy. It'll be, it'll be cool to see how he plays, especially in the animation style of this movie. I'm actually really looking forward to it. He's going to be voiced by Jason Schwartzman, who you know from every Wes Anderson movie ever. It's going to be an important thing to have this advantage of a superpower, considering there's so many spider totems he's going to go up against. And we also know that the voice actor, Jason, is going to be in the third movie, so he won't die. But also it means that there's a bigger bad at play because this is a trilogy. We saw a 460% increase in copies sold of this book compared to last week, and there are 506 slabs on the CGC census. 88 of them are graded at a 9.8. He's going to need every advantage he can get going up against so many spider totems. And really, Spot hasn't got like a whole lot of love since the animation show really did him justice. And since he got killed by Carnage in the most recent run, one of the best reads of 2022. We're almost done with the video. We're moving on to number one. So that means you guys need to make sure and hit the like button. And you should probably hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that. It's not that hard. Uh, it's free, and that way you get to watch all our videos as they come out. And what's this at the list at number one? A Wookiee Jedi leading it in Star Wars Life Day number one. This came out in 2021, seeing $8 average sales, 9.8s, hitting 50 bucks. We have the Acolyte that is slated soon. And we saw set photos that makes it look like we're going to see a, another phase of the just very lovable character that's probably going to be like the next baby Yoda. I mean, we saw Chris Santin. Sure enough, it makes sense that we would see a new Jedi. This book has the first a full appearance of Buri Yaga Agaburi. Say that 10 times that fast, is, Ryan. <laughs> the, no, I won't. I will not do it. You got me to say it once. That's it. It's a Wookiee Jedi and I'm just excited that we're getting more and more, like, Wookiees in Star Wars. You know, I'm, I'm, Chewbacca's cool, but give us more. There's more. 99.8s are on the census. This is pretty cheap. I mean, one recently sold for 30 bucks. So reporting on a $50 one, one hit 30, which is essentially cost. So for the Star Wars initiated, Life Day is basically the Christmas style holiday celebration that they have on Kashyyyk, which is Chewbacca's home planet. People first learned about Life Day in the infamous Star Wars Christmas special that George Lucas has done absolutely everything he can to bury. You can still find copies of it out there. There's still a version of it on YouTube and the best part about the Star Wars holiday special is it's the first appearance of Boba Fett. Correct. I mean this came out between the first and second movie. Technically when you uh, consider the comic books this is the third Star Wars anything to be released. So this is a kind of the first time I'm really hearing about this Acolyte show. I'm kind of out of the loop. There's just a whole lot of uh, content to watch on Disney Plus especially. I still need to catch up on Andor but this Acolyte show is going to take place during the High Republic era, which sounds awesome. I'm down to get a far, far prequel. I don't think we've really seen that on screen yet anyway. I am also behind on my Star Wars, but a Jedi Wookiee? That's going to reel me back in. I need to know your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, keep responsibly. No? Said, join myself and all of my homies. Like legit, every single person I know joins us on whatnot. And it's an amazing time. We do dollar start auctions that last as little as 15 seconds long. We do giveaways that when we drop, they get announced within five minutes or less. Some of the best deals happening on the internet as it pertains to the comic book industry are on the best new place to buy and sell them. Link in the description and we have two other videos for you to watch. We made them for you. Have a great week.